So when it comes to my body, I'll, I'll look in the mirror and it's it brings in that disconnect, that dissociative part of it, where it's just not what I think I look like. It's, it's adjacent to body dysmorphia. Well, Missouri is like, you know, a really red state. Um, so it's kind of just like a, you know where to hang out. Mostly like, as you get more a part of the LGBTQ plus community, you kind of like, can get a vibe for people and be like, oh, I know to kind of stay away from you and I know to kind of hang around you uh, more often. Um, as far as support, I think it's it can be pretty sparse if you think about it, um, especially if you are a trans identifying youth. Um, it can be really easy for legislation to come out that's targeted towards you as a human being and a person um, and that makes you just feel unseen not valued as a human being and so just kind of being in that um, I think it can be really tough for our trans youth just to feel that support and sense of community when the multiple states are saying that you you know don't have or shouldn't have access to just regular human needs. I really started delving into my gender identity and sexuality when the Obergefell v. Hodges cases, case came out. I remember I was like, what, 12 or so? Um, and I had seen a bunch of like rainbow flags being posted online, so I was like, what is, what is this all about? Um, so I started questioning then, like what that was, just to see that, and I was in the sixth, sixth grade when I was like, oh, I, I think I'm a lesbian because I like women. Um, but then, as I read more about it and got into those communities online, um, I was like, oh, these uncomfortable feelings that I'm feeling around puberty um, actually seem a lot more like gender dysphoria. Um, and I think a bit of it was fear at first to really go into that, that talk with myself of being completely male, but so, so I, identified as gender fluid for like a few months before I really came to terms with it and I was keeping it all to myself at that point. I mostly use they them pronouns but uh, I'm gender fluid so like sometimes they change up um, depending on literally whatever um, and I usually have like pins uh, on my shirt that like say what pronouns I use am using that day. Um, when I finally figured out the word for it it was um, freshman year of high school, literally on, uh, it was Black Friday, <laughs> um, I can't remember what year, whenever I was a freshman in high school, it was that day when I found a word for it because I went shopping for Black Friday with my mom and some of my cousins and I like, kept looking up like words, I was like, what, what is this feeling, what is this feeling, and I finally found it. Right now, um, and this has always been a real struggle as far as our social political climate as it, in regards to our you know, trans youth, um, there's been consistent tensions and constant legislation that has been passed over the years um, that's anti-LGBTQ+, um, but more specifically targeted towards um, anti-trans legislation. However, I think just more so recently, in these past couple of years, it's been more in the mainstream. So more folks are starting to talk about it, more folks are asking the questions, which I think is really good as far as questioning why these legislations are actually being put into place now. Let's see, high school, um, yeah, well there was people who were like, you know, homophobic and transphobic. Um, but I mostly, obviously, chose to hang around people uh, who were also part of the community or allies. Um, so I'm drum major and all the freshmen knew me and so they all voted me for Homecoming King, which I got, which was a win for the LGBT community. But the moment that that happened, a few days later, I woke up to so many texts saying, oh my goodness, look, I'm so sorry about what everybody's been saying about you. It was endless streams. I think in the first day, it was probably like 
50 messages alone on Instagram, not even in messages or emails, things like that. And I had found out that so, so much of the student population had been discussing uh, who I was. Um, yeah, there are a few instances at my high school that, you know, um, I know that one instance where like, uh, it was, it was for a day of silence and it, um, it was a poster hung up on a stairwell. Um, and it, I can't remember what it said, but it said something queer. <laughs> Um, and someone ripped it down, and that I, that day is actually really scary for me. And I even found out a few months later that I had been getting death threats without me knowing. Um, and it really all sparked from when they posted uh, a photo on the school website of who won homecoming court, um, which you know they do all the time, but they had to turn the comments off because the parents were just so. So rude in the comments to say, to put it lightly. The school supported me surprisingly well. Um, I, I know that day after I'd woken up and gone to school, uh, the principal, the principals pulled me aside and were like, "Hey, are you okay? We've heard everything that's going on," and they wanted to see if anybody had come up to me personally. And they, they just wanted to get my side of the story. Um, I ended up again in tears in front of these people, these, these adults, um, and they suspended a few people that they knew were culprits, but even then, it doesn't take away the sting of knowing that the person you went to take care with told, told you online to die. Um, so as far as cause of kind of resurfacing of trans hate, Honestly, I feel like with a lot of diversity issues and topics in general, it's just lack of awareness, lack of exposure, um, lack of human connection. So, and I can't speak for everybody, but I feel like in my just experience, it seems that a lot of people who are putting out this hate language and these hate concepts, they've never actually had a sit down and con or just a conversation with someone who identifies as trans. So it's like, obviously it's beneficial for um, a kids in the LGBTQ plus community to know terms, but it's also important for like allies to like know the terms and like for kids to be um, acclimated to that kind of language so that they can be supportive in the future um, and it be kind of normalized um, for them. and. You know, we can end like stigma and stereotypes and everything like that. So well, yeah, Governor Abbott um, of Texas um, signed this uh, kind of medical bill prohibiting um, trans use from receiving uh, medical care and access towards their gender identity um, or just in realms of that. If a kid is getting any kind of accommodation to like their gender or sexuality, then the teachers are um, required to call their parents about it, which is extremely bad because one rule if like of anything is you're never supposed to out anyone without their permission. Um, because it might not be safe to do so, or they're just like uncomfortable with the situation or whatever. Um, but yeah, and especially um, being forced to come out to your parents who may not be supportive and you're like living with them um, and you're depending on them for like shelter and food. That's, and if they're not supportive and you have to live with that, and so, I mean, I think healthcare, um, in my opinion, is a right and not a privilege. And so, um, and that could be, you know, unpopular opinion, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, and so, there is a lot that I think, again, lack of education, lack of awareness that goes into that, that I think people are easily overlooking how um, critical um, trans youth receiving medical care is, especially in regards to um, 
transitioning and just for as an example um, so if you are a you know trans youth and you wake up every day look at yourself in the mirror and you do identify with a body that's like being reflected I mean that can translate into so many other just issues and so having to be in a body that you don't identify with is extremely um, tough in addition to everything else that life kind of throws at you especially as a youth right so you know all the the, the teen drama um, so I can't even imagine having to deal with you know high school drama or middle school drama in addition to this extra layer of not feeling um, you're not being able to identify with the body that you are in. There's a lot to be done, not just within schools, but on, on the state and federal level to protect trans people, trans kids specifically. Because I, I don't even, perhaps it's a mix of dysphoria in and of itself, but I don't even participate in a lot of sports like I want to, just because they would require me to use the women's room and I couldn't stomach that just for you. Call out transphobia. Um, make sure people are you know, aware of the language that they use. Language is really, really important. And so if you are in a setting, whether you know, um, the person who they're talking about you know, is in the room or not, if a microaggression is said, or something that's transphobic is said, you know, check your peers, check your friends and say, I think you can, you know, say this in a better way, or I think you meant to say, um, you know, and then go into that explanation, or even just correcting other people on misusing people's pronouns. That's something that I think that's simple that people can do in their everyday, you know, conversations, and that's being an ally. There's a section of, of people that just do not support or judge people based on how they look or their own experiences. It's incredibly ableist at times, incredibly racist, um, fat phobic, xenophobic, and I think we need to really come together and show that we really are united regardless of uh, those aspects of ourselves because we have endured that representative, or that, I'm sorry, we have endured that oppression of being queer.